Hello and welcome to Mark, our Commander Spotlight, where today we're talking about Ramsey Snow, the bastard of Bolton. Bastard! Ramsey Snow, as a neutral commander, can be fielded within six of the seven available factions. But today we're going to focus on his use inside of the neutral faction. Inside of the neutrals, Ramsey is the most popular and the highest rated commander of the four possible choices that the neutrals currently field. Ramsey Snow brings with him as an attachment the order Flay Them All. When an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test, one other enemy within long range of that unit must make a panic test. A useful ability built around the general Bolton mechanic of passing off panic tokens and making additional panic checks. Ramsey Snow, of course, also brings with him the affiliation House Bolton making the unit that he's attached to have the House Bolton keyword for the synergy that it has with his command cards. As well as his own attachment, Ramsey Snow brings with him Theon Greyjoy, aka Reek. Reek has an order of set an example. When this unit activates, one enemy within long range becomes panicked. Roll a die and on a 5 plus, kill Theon. Theon Greyjoy is an important piece to help set up the synergies and input needed panic tokens that uh, Ramsey wants to utilize to empower his own tactics cards. Ramsey is quite unique in that he wants his opponent to have panic tokens on them, but doesn't actually use them up and wants to keep them fill, full up of panic rather than burning through them to gain those additional effects. Theon is a great use to be able to put out a panic token when needed, but we should, due to his chance to die, we don't necessarily want to just put out a panic token every time we have the option to do so. We want to be sure that this is an effect that we want at this specific time, because whether or not our opponent has a panic token at the right moment can have a very big impact upon his tactics cards. So, where are we going to attach Ramsey Snow to get the most out of his attachment abilities and really craft our army around our first unit? With his units being focused upon panic-based abilities, it's a relatively um, easy match and good synergy to see him in either the uh, Bolton Cutthroats due to their vicious ability or similarly inside of the Bolton Bastard Girls. Both units possess the vicious keyword on their melee attacks and with high damage outputs they really do favour putting out an aggressive attack and leading through to a failed panic mechanic. But as both already come with the Bolton keyword and due to the House Bolton sub-faction of the neutral uh, army having a relatively low selection of units that we can pick from there is probably an even better opportunity here to help expand out our unit selection options outside of those house bolton units and by selecting another neutral unit which does not bring in bring inherently with it the house bolton keyword we can expand our unit selection across the neutral faction as a whole without removing our ability to use the secondary effect upon his command cards which trigger off of our house Bolton affiliation. To that end I once again for the second week running believe that the best unit he can be fielded inside of is the Stormcrow Dervishes. His tactics cards as we'll see in a minute have some good synergies with Swift Strike. By bringing the house Bolton keyword he can once again empower his command cards and with a very powerful attack profile and high speed, this is a really great unit to field our commander with him. So let's take a dive on into his tactics cards and see what we're working with. Ramsey Snow's first tactic card, Our Blades Are Sharp, says, When a friendly unit attacks with melee, if targeting a panicked enemy, this attack gains plus one to hit and rolls plus two die. If this is a House Bolton unit, the defender also becomes vulnerable. This is one of the most empowering cards that can make a melee attack incredibly explosive. 
if we use this card on either house uh, house bottom cutthroats or on stormcrow dervishes we can give ourselves 10 attacks at full ranks that hit on twos if used on the charge this is almost 10 average hits and if we have Ramsey inside of our Stormcrow Dervishes, we can ensure that either way round, this opponent will be vulnerable. Combine this with the fact that our enemy is already panicked, and we have a real, real potential to be killing entire 12 wound units on an attack. There is almost no downsides to this card, and with a relatively easy setup of only requiring the opponent to be panicked, but we have the ability when we activate with Reek to place that panic token. This is an amazing card. It is one of the highest impact cards in the game and with a relatively simple trigger, I believe it's right up there as one of the singular uses to use Ramsey. Inside of the house neutral, uh, the neutral faction, we have other tactics cards which can allow us to recirculate cards. And I think that if you can play this card early, circulate it into the discard pile, then this is one of the main cards we are going to look to bring back into our hand. Ramsey's second card, Cruel Methods, says, At the start of the round, one friendly unit may make a free attack action. If it does not destroy an enemy, it must make a panic test and suffers a minus three to its roll. If it is a House Bolton unit, it may use its highest attack die value and may also re-roll any misses. Another incredibly impactful card, which your opponent must always be aware of possibly, possibly being there. This is a very high impact with mild risk card. Our main targets are going to be units that have the high damage potential to kill off an enemy. Um, particularly, once again, the House Spot and Cutthroats are a brilliant target for this. At the start of the round, your opponent will not have activated and therefore we will be able to vulnerable our enemy on top of our high attack profile, our reroll any misses because we're House Bolton, and our opponent will be then taking a vicious panic check. We have a very good chance to kill our opponent, but if we fail, we will be taking a 10 plus morale check ourselves. So there is some risk there. If we play it on Stormcrow Dervishes, which have Ramsey in, we get almost all of the same effects, minus the vulnerable. And we can even use it with Swift Strike to follow up, and we will be able to get ourselves out of a bad situation, or maybe even on our own first turn tempo turns, make an attack. If we don't destroy our opponent, we can retreat uh, maybe to the side, and we can set up, up another charge directly off of the back of that attack. So we have two good uses there and they can help us force through some damage. But actually I think its best use is in combination with the House Bolton Bastard Girls. This unit, while its first attack is very unlikely to kill our opponent, it can allow us to uh, trigger our charging volley order. Allows us to follow up with another attack afterwards and of course, that combo potential is what the, um, the House Bolton Bastard Girls are all about. They want to engage early in the turn and uh, make charges that your opponent doesn't expect. So, three brilliant outlets for this card with a ton of uses and only a minus kind of setback there. I still think this is incredibly powerful and a big game-changing play. Ramsey's third card, Sadistic Games says, start of a friendly turn. Your opponent chooses one of the following. You declare targets only after they choose. Up to two enemy combat units become panicked, or one enemy combat unit suffers D3 plus two automatic hits. A useful card. In most cases, your opponent will want to be avoiding the additional panic tokens that you want to put out. This is generally going to mean that they will favor choosing D3 plus two hits. But this has great use against units such as low health solos, where your opponent is very scared of that those hits and their real potential to kill a unit. 
with a very, very easy trigger of start of a friendly turn, we can help to push through extra damage through these hits or get ourselves building up panic tokens, which we always want to need with both Ramsey and the faction as a whole. It has good use, but as one of the lower impact cards on the game, I think that it's the worst of his three. And really, we pick Ramsey for our Blades Are Sharp and Cruel Methods, which are two incredible cards. Sadistic Games has a use to try and set up those panic tokens, but mostly our opponent will simply take the hits and will lose maybe two wounds at most on most units. And so, really, I think that it has use, but is not our main play here. So let's have a look at how we can craft ourselves a high tier neutral Ramsey Snow commanded list. Beginning with Ramsey, I think that it is a absolute gimme that if they're available, he should be deployed inside of the Stormcrow Dervishes. By giving them that keyword, he gives himself more unit selection while not giving up any advantages of his command cards. Setting us back seven points, House Button Cutthroats are a very efficient unit, even before we consider the synergies that the House Button affiliation brings with it. Therefore, uh, another two of these, setting us back an additional 10 points, is a really solid start to our list. As I mentioned, there are some very key synergies that come in with the House Button Bastard Girls. At seven points, I think we only want to field one of these because they're at best when used using the sword zone or our um, special command cards to gain charges outside of our own activation. By making an attack and then using that attack action rather than a charge full action to gain a charge action, we get much more out of the unit. But there are only limited cases when that's available. So we should really focus on making one unit and controlling them well and using them as well as possible. When we come to our NCUs for the neutral faction, there is relatively limited choice. But at the same time, we have some of the most powerful NCUs that are seen throughout all the other factions. I think Lord Varys is an absolute go-to. At four points, he is one of the most powerful NCUs in the game and is fielded in many other factions. So we should definitely add him. As neutrals in general, we like the money bag zone. But we want to keep the offensive potential for the list as high as possible. And I think that Peter Baelish has a great use in taking the money bags, but replacing it with the attack zones effect. Or replacing it possibly with the letters zone effect, allowing us to draw tactics cards and place a panic token on our opponent, which we need, while denying the money bags use to remove the panic later on in the round as a response. So... With Petter Baelish and Lord Varys selected, we have ourselves four combat units and we come in at a total of 32 points. With eight points left, this is where things get difficult and kind of depend roughly on your own playstyle or what exactly you want to round out the list with. I would recommend that we add either Bronn, the Sellsword, or actually I prefer a Stormcrow Lieutenant to our House Bolton Bastard Girls. At a single point, he can add plus one attack and sundering to both their ranged attack and their melee profile. This makes them far more aggressive and gives them much higher damage potential as a double attack combo. Especially when we combine this with, as we discussed, Peter Baelish. He can take the money bags but replace it with swords and make that attack and doesn't require much setup. With only seven points left, we can either follow up with a defensive unit in the form of the House Bolton Blackguards, who come very well suited to either having a Bolton Flayer or a Dreadfort Captain. Both will um, make the unit quite tanky and provide some benefits to the rest of the army. But I do generally think that 
they are not the strongest unit that we could field. Another option includes fielding another unit of House Bolton Cutthroats, who are always efficient at five points and synergize very well with our list. But we don't want to be over-reliant on the vicious keyword, even if Panic is generally one of our best mechanics. Another choice is, of course, we could play a three NCU setup with Walder Frey. Both of these choices at five points mean that we have enough points left to add a few more attachments. At two points left, we could add Bron, who again synergizes well with Peter Baelish, but we don't want to be oh, too reliant upon needing the money bags. But it in itself can put pressure on your opponent to take money bags when they don't want to. I think that all three of the one point attachments of the uh, Dreadfort Captain, uh, the Bolton Flyer, and of course the Stormcrow Lieutenant all have great synergy in these units. And any selection that you make, you just need to know why and what situations you want them for. With an incredibly aggressive damage output, this army is definitely on the finesse end of use. It does put out uh, an extreme amount of damage and has very high explosive potential. But we are quite reliant upon getting alpha strikes. And so positioning is incredibly important. I think that this army takes some practice, but overall can achieve very good results. So why not head over to A Song of Ice and Fire Stats and check out our new builder. If you haven't used it already, it's a great new tool for helping you build army lists and is just the first in a oncoming set of new developments for army list building advice. So uh, go over, check it out, save your army lists and let us know in the comments on Facebook or in YouTube or wherever you're watching this, um, what kind of army lists you'd like to fill with Ramsey, what you've had success with, or even if you'd like some advice. Um, I'm always more than happy to jump on in there and let you know what I think could help uh, tool up your lists because that's what this is all about. It's all about helping people produce the best list they can and uh, really enjoy fielding the commanders that they like the most. So, Ramsey is definitely one to watch out for. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you have, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.